Today, we're diving into the world of electrolyte drinks or electrolyte supplements, similar to liquid IV and others, which have become increasingly popular. They promise for enhanced hydration, better athletic performance, and quicker recovery. But how effective are these drinks? And when should we actually use them? Let's find out. If all that sounds good to you, let's go. Hi folks, welcome to my channel or welcome back. My name is Kat, I'm a licensed registered dietitian nutritionist and on this channel I like to talk about weight inclusive and weight neutral focused approaches to health as well as diving into scammy and in my opinion unethical nutrition related businesses, products, mostly nutrition related MLMs and other fear mongering nutrition related claims. Let's just dive in. First up, what is an electrolyte drink? They're beverages that are formulated with a variety of ingredients and a variety of nutrients, specifically usually sodium, potassium, and magnesium, which are referred to as electrolytes. Those are essential for various bodily functions. Now, these drinks are created or formulated with those kind of electrolytes and other ingredients to help replenish what is lost in sweat, especially during more intense activity or illness. Now, the primary benefit of these drinks is hydration. When we sweat, we not only lose water, but we lose electrolytes electrolytes. And those are really important, really crucial for the management of fluid balance in our body. Replenishing those when they are reduced can help with muscle cramping, hydration overall, and fatigue that's specifically related to the fatigue that we have when we are low in those electrolytes. For people, for athletes who are engaging in activity, prolonged physical activity, and just sweating a lot, electrolyte drinks can really be a game changer and really beneficial for both performance and recovery. But not all electrolyte beverages are created equally. Some use a specific ratio with electrolytes and glucose together to create something that is like an oral rehydration solution. And that is very evidence-based to help and be beneficial with the absorption, the uh, hydration benefit overall and some other ones just put electrolytes just kind of randomly in there now depending on the person depending on the athlete that I'm working with that will determine whether or not I'm recommending one and that'll also determine which one which kind that I'm recommending because there is like no set standard other than like more specific oral rehydration solutions there is just an overall wide variety of options and there are also various needs so in certain circumstances I might recommend one over the other even for the same person. Now, a really good question is when should you start thinking about an electrolyte drink? Is it something that you should have on a daily basis? That really depends on the person and that can change from day to day. They are most beneficial and recommended during prolonged activity, activity where you are losing or there is a need to replenish the electrolytes. If you're working outside, you're doing a lot of yard work and sweating, that might be a really good example, a good time, a good opportunity to use something like an electrolyte drink. They can be useful in cases of like mild dehydration, like during some illnesses, or sometimes in cases of gastroenteritis, they're often recommended by physicians. But it just depends on the case and the person. However, for daily hydration overall, water, plain water is usually sufficient. We can get enough electrolytes in our food, especially fruits and vegetables. This is one of the reasons, one of the many reasons why I really encourage people to add on an additional handful of fruits or veggies whenever they can, if they can. Doesn't have to be fresh, it can be frozen, canned, dried. Let's just see if we can maybe add some here and there. However though, there are many times, especially being a sports dietitian and also working a lot in digestive health, there are many times and instances where an electrolyte like drink makes sense and where it is beneficial. Specifically talking about food sources though and electrolytes, I'll put up a picture, I screenshot this from one of my handouts. I'm gonna refer to it. As far as food sources go for electrolytes, for sodium specifically, pickle, salsa, tomato sauces, soup, table salt, of course, those are really great sources for sodium. For potassium, we're talking about potatoes, beans, of course, banana is the one that most people think of when they hear potassium. Magnesium, that includes lots of leafy greens and then also nuts and seeds. For Chloride, we're also thinking about table salt, but tomato, celery, olives, for phosphorus, vegetables in general, but also grains, legumes, eggs, and for calcium, we're thinking about yogurt, milk, and dairy overall, but also spinach, kale, sardines. 
So if you have some concerns or if you're wanting to increase maybe your electrolyte intake, take a look at that picture and see maybe here and there how we can begin to incorporate more of those kind of foods. Most people aren't like deficient in sodium, but especially if you aren't eating out a lot, if you're making a lot of your food and you're not using a lot of table salt, it might not be a bad idea to maybe sprinkle some on. I can't give any specific recommendations without like knowing what your intake is like, but for a large majority of people, focusing on the potassium, magnesium, chloride, phosphorus, calcium, just being aware of those, incorporating some of those foods generally is supportive of physical health. Now we spoke about how generally water intake is like a sufficient way to stay hydrated as well as overall variety of food intake, but you might have the question of when would be a good time to actually consume some electrolyte drinks. So again, this is something that really depends on the individual. It's not like a hard kind of this, that kind of thing, but some good guidelines are when you are physically active, doing physical activity for more than one hour, or even if it's shorter for that, if it's on like a very hot day or you are an excessive sweater or during an illness that is causing some dehydration. And because of the wide variety of different electrolyte blends, I really encourage you if you are able to consult with your doctor or a registered dietitian for the best oral rehydration solution for you, that would be overall what I would recommend because there is not like one specific kind of electrolyte supplement that's gonna like be the best one for everybody. Now it is worth talking about some of the potential downsides to consuming a lot of these electrolyte beverages. Now overconsumption can lead to an overall imbalance of these electrolytes and your body will like excrete those out, but at that point that can be kind of counterproductive if it is working on excreting some of that excessive amount out. If you are considering adding an electrolyte beverage, it's important to know your own hydration needs. Consider factors like your activity levels, the climate you live in, the climate that you're active in, your sweat rates and your overall health. Now I have a download for fluid needs that I use with my athletes and so I will put a picture of it up here. I'll also leave a link to the Iron Movement website where you can like put your email in and download that but if you don't want to deal with that you can just take a screenshot. Not gatekeeping here but that's a way to kind of assess hydration needs. This is not like an end all be all kind of thing. It's a place where we will start and then adjust from there. And especially if you are dealing with any kind of health condition, medical condition, it is really important to consult with a health professional. If you're having some questions or concerns about the accessibility of that, because that is a very, like it's one thing to say like talk to your doctor kind of thing, but the accessibility of that is not there for a lot of people. There are a lot of barriers to that though. If that's the case, looking for really like sliding scale options. I know a lot of health professionals uh, do sliding scale. I provide sliding scale as I'm able to. So I did want to make that caveat. Like I know that can be a barrier itself, but it is really important, especially if you have any medical conditions or anything like that to like not just take random advice, especially if it is like kidney related because having too much of an electrolyte, like potassium, for example, in kidney disease, that is not a, that's not a good idea. If you are consuming electrolyte drinks kind of like regularly and and if you find that you have an increase in like confusion or irritability, an irregular heart rate, breathing difficulties, fatigue, headache, muscle cramps or weakness, diarrhea or constipation, nausea or vomiting, those can be signs of an excessive intake of electrolytes. And it's kind of interesting because at the same time, those can also be signs of like not enough electrolyte intake. So I would say that if you are regularly consuming these kind of beverages, and if you have those symptoms, so I would recommend you talk to a health professional about that. It might be worth reducing the amount of electrolytes that you're drinking to see if any of those are reduced, any of those symptoms are reduced. To wrap it up, electrolytes can serve a purpose. They do serve a purpose, but it's not an everyday, every person kind of thing. Specifically electrolyte drinks. Electrolytes in general, like those are an every person thing, but electrolyte supplements. They can have significant benefits for hydration and athletic performance and recovery, but they're not a one size fits all solution. They serve a specific purpose and are most effective when used appropriately. As with any kind of dietary addition, it is really important to understand your needs and making an informed choice. Just like with a lot of things in nutrition, it is not an all or nothing kind of thing. Sometimes they're needed, most of the time they're not. Now I did wanna share one of my favorite electrolyte products. It has a really good balance of electrolytes and carbohydrates, and that is this one. It is from Clean 
clean athlete and if you see right here it has that NSF sport because I work with a lot of athletes it is really whoa that was a really big color change but because I work with a lot of athletes who do like regular testing of course it's important to make sure that you're getting supplements without added contaminants and fillers and things like that but we also want to make sure that they're not like failing any kind of drug testing. So that is a really good blend that I like to use. I haven't used it for myself since August, just for the reason that I haven't needed to. I was using that multiple times a week during the summer because I was working out in a gym that doesn't have any HVAC and it was just way too hot to not have any kind of additional support electrolyte beverage. But yeah, I haven't needed to use that since August, but that is one that I really do like to have on hand in case I do need something like an electrolyte beverage. And I also really like the carbohydrate blend that is in here. It's just really good like when I think about applied sports nutrition this is something that I think is really cool this is not sponsored in any way shape or form I purchased that 100% on my own zero ties all right so that wraps it up for this video let me know if you learned something from this video as well please leave a like if you like this video make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already I greatly appreciate that and remember you can strive for health without subscribing to diet culture I'll see you later bye